In this tutorial, we're going to look at what it takes to properly size DC wiring for your projects. Unfortunately, it's not as easy as it seems, and a lot of people don't even think about it. Well, after you complete this tutorial, I think you'll see that there's a lot to it. Ever since the days when Nikolai Tesla had battle with Thomas Edison, it's been known that DC wiring can exhibit voltage drops. The amount of voltage drop that the wiring exhibits has everything to do with how much current you pass through the wire, as well as wire length. Now, if you don't know a lot about this topic, please see my primer on high power DC wiring on my website, rvproject.com. However, once you have those concepts, it can be a little difficult to figure out the wiring size, so I've also included a calculator. You can get the calculator by going to my website, clicking on tips, and then wire calculator. There's actually two calculators here. There's the first one that will allow you to find out what required wire size is depending on the circuit length and the load in amps. The second one is for how much voltage drop you can expect if you already have a wire installed. Now there are many of these calculators out on the internet but what makes mine unique is right here the ground type. Most of these calculators only do round trip calculations. That is, wire going from the battery to the load and back to the battery. In contrast, my calculator will do round trip, plus it will accommodate chassis grounds. So if you have a vehicle with a wire that goes from the battery to the load and then from the load to ground, then this calculator will do both. In this example, we have an installation of a stereo in a boat. And of course, with a fiberglass bolt, we have to run both the positive and the negative wires. You'll see here that at the battery, we have a 12.6 volt battery. And at the stereo, we have 12.3 volts. This is within a normal operating range of the stereo equipment. And we can verify this with our online voltage drop calculator. So we want to enter the wiring distance of 15 feet and we have either the option of a ground wire or a chassis ground. Ground wire is appropriate in this situation because in a fiberglass boat there is no chassis ground so we have both a supply wire and a return wire. If we were in a vehicle we could use chassis ground and of course in an RV you could have either. The load is 4 amps and the maximum voltage drop we have a choice of either a 3% for electronic circuits or 10% for electrical circuits. Now this recommendation comes from the U.S. Coke card in the regulation 33 CFR 183, which states that they want to see no more than a 3% voltage drop for sensitive electronic circuits, yet general purpose electrical circuits can use a 10% voltage drop. So that's a pretty good set of criteria to use really in any application. So we're going to use 3% for electronic circuits. And for wire type, we have a choice of American Wire Gauge or Society of Automotive Engineers. Now when you're looking at marine wiring and automotive wiring, you may find some SAE. And when you look at boat wiring, you may find AWG or SAE or a combination of both. And in the RV again, you can find both as well. So we're going to go AWG. And normally we're at 12 volts. Let's just say, let's just go with the 12.6 volts. Now we want to do a calculate. And we see here that the recommended wire size is 14 to AWG, which is what we're using. And the voltage drop is 0.315 volts or 315 millivolts. And we have a 2.5% voltage drop which is within our 3% for electronic circuits. And in fact, the maximum current that would stay under 3% would be 4.81 amps. And just as a reference, uh, 4100 circular mills for the wire. However, now we're going to add an external amplifier into the boat stereo system. So the load now has gone from 4 amps to 24 amps. We still have the same 12.6 volts at the battery, but now we only have 10.1 volts at the stereo because of the voltage drop due to the excessive current. Now it might be pointed out 
that a 14 gauge wire can handle at least 30 amps of current but the voltage drop is just too excessive for the system to work correctly. This is a clear example of the operational problems you're going to run into in a DC wiring environment where an excessive voltage drop occurs long before achieving the maximum current capacity of the wire. Now we're going to look at the calculator again. However, now we're going to use the second calculator, which will provide some indication of what will happen if we increase the load on the wire. So again, under circuit length, we're going to put in 15 foot. A ground type is still ground wire. And the load in amps this time, though, is 24 amps. Of course, this is a maximum load. So in this scenario, we're going to put in 14 AWG. And notice there's SAE and AWG here both listed. And again, we're going to make this 12.6 volts. Now here it shows that we'll have an expected voltage loss of almost 2 volts and less than 11 volts at the load. And almost a 15% voltage drop. So clearly we have to increase the wire size so that we do not have an excessive voltage drop. So let's go back to the first calculator. Circuit length again is 15 feet. Ground wire. This time 24 amps. Again we'll go to 12.6. It says you need 6 AWG. Now that may seem excessive but remember we actually have 30 feet of circuit length in here because we're going 15 feet from the battery to the stereo and then 15 feet back from the stereo back to the negative side of the battery. So let's try another example. Here we have a trailer frame that we want to add electro brakes to. And the specification for the brakes are they require a minimum of 12 volts to operate and it also takes 3 amps of current to fully lock the brakes. And what's unique about this scenario is that there are different loads depending on which wire and which brake. However, we're going to try to run the same gauge wire to all the brakes just to make it easier. So we're going to do run D first because the 7 pin pigtail is wired with 12 AWG for the brake line. Again, we're going to put in our parameters of 6 foot for the circuit length. That's the length of the pigtail for the 7 pin connector. And then 12 amps because we have four brakes at 3 amps each. And the pigtail is already wired in 12 gauge. And our system voltage from the truck is 13.4 volts. When we calculate that, we show a 0.238 volt drop. So that's what we're going to use for run D. So we enter those figures into our sheet. And now we continue on with run A. Now what's interesting is that there's actually two run A's, one for each axle. However, we do not have to add them together because run A for the front axle is 3 amps and run A for the rear axle is 3 amps. We only have to add one of them because remember we're looking for the brake voltage for the brakes at the end of the run. Next is run B. Run B is 12 amps. Also, notice that run B is a 14 foot segment and a 3 foot segment, so we have to use 17 foot total. And lastly, we do run C. Now, run C is 6 amps because as you can see, we only run to the rear two brakes. And when we add everything up, we have a total loss with using 12 gauge for the entire system of 1.05 volts, which should theoretically anyway give us a brake voltage of 12.4 volts. So in this situation, the 12 gauge wiring should be sufficient. In summary, DC wiring, especially the wiring that carries significant loads, is often not even considered when we do our projects until we find out that something doesn't work right. So hopefully this tutorial will give you some insight on how to correctly determine what size wiring that you need for your next project, especially when you're adding devices to existing DC circuits. That can sometimes be a real pain in the keister.